is Dave Clausen. He is going to be joining the PM set right now. Just sat down, getting comfortable with the guys. Eddie's going to take some more notes, but right now we're going to pass it over to y'all. <laughs> Thanks, Kelsey. Uh, we were sitting there. We're, we're going to get to football, but, but Coach just got back, and we were talking about Italy. I mean, go figure, right? You and I talking food in Italy. Some things <laughs> never change. So we had a great vacation. We went to Tuscany, and I was with uh, our whole family and my brother and sister-in-law, and just beautiful country, great wine, great food. I got back from the trip, and I got in a scale. Oh, no. And I saw numbers I've never seen before. Offensive lineman, welcome to the club, <laughs> yeah. baby. You know, so, <laughs> Coach, isn't it amazing how much weight you lose when you go to Italy because you're walking so much? <laughs> so, I got on the scale. I'm like, the, the pants felt a little tighter, and I wasn't prepared for what I saw. Uh, so. Worth it. every piece of pasta. Absolutely. Worth I'll do it all again. Piece. How much do you disconnect, though, from football? When you're overseas like that and you're obviously enjoying the family and the culture, how hard is it to get away from the phone and what's going on? You know, I've almost, and my wife has been a great influence to me on me, is taking trips like that so you can disconnect. Yeah. Just the time change and things like that make it harder. And at the end of the day, you come back and you look at your phone and you know there's going to be eight issues. <laughs> and you just try to block it out and deal with it all at once. But... Um, you know, if you're with your family on a vacation, it's not fair to them if you're constantly looking at your phone right. and being preoccupied with other things. And, you know, I'm so lucky that I've, uh, you know, I've been married for 26 years and I got two great kids. And, you know, you don't want to wish your life away. Any problem you have will be there at the end of the day or when you get back and trying to enjoy the moments when you're there. Amen. That's beautiful. I know they appreciate that, and it's probably something that was hard to do. I mean, it's <laughs> your life, and, and football is such a big piece of that. Uh, but let's jump into it because it's funny to me, Coach, uh, just, just from a people that don't know perspective. Uh, I've done a lot of radio hits, and people are saying, well, Wake Forest lost this, they lost that. You know, they're not going to be any good. I said, hold on a second. Do, do you know what they have? Do you know who this man is? <laughs> um, I'm jacked up for your team. I think your offense is going to be exceptional. I think Mitch has waited his turn. He's learned. And he's, I mean, he's has the thoroughbred of wide receivers and just stockpiled. I've got all the names here. But what have you seen from him from a leadership standpoint where he's ready for this moment? I mean, M Mitch is in his fourth year. And I think one of the narratives with us is people talk about how much we lost. And we have 11 new starters. But these guys have been there three, four, five years. We're, we're not young. Right. We're still an older football team. And I think this narrative the last two years of when all those red shirt leaves and all the COVID people leave, you know, Wake Forest is going to be this really young team again. Uh, a great example is offensive line. Last year, Javionte Nash was a starter for us in his seventh year. Well, guess who our left tackle is this year? Spencer Clapp, who's in his seventh year. <laughs> We graduated two six-year offensive linemen, but we got guys in their fourth and fifth years who are, are ready to play. Yes, we lost A.T. Perry, but who in this league wouldn't love to have Jamal Banks, right. Donovan Green, Taylor Marin, and Keyshawn Williams? So we're going to have our challenges like every year, and we're not a perfect football team, and you know we're going to have issues, and we're going to have some inexperience. Uh, but I still think we're a good football team with good players. When we had Mitch here just recently, uh, I said, you know, if I had to rank uh, the, the wide receiver core of the ACC, I'd rank wink number one in terms of quality and quantity. And we, we kid around with them because all those wide receivers want the ball and they're always wide open. I said, what's it like in the huddle? He said, you know what, I got a bunch of selfless guys. We like to block. We know that we're going to get the ball thrown to us. And, and when you've got that kind of mentality, Coach, and that goes back to what you guys have done as a staff from a mentality of, hey, here's how we coach them up, you can have success. And there's a reason you guys keep putting points on every single year, regardless of who the quarterback, offensive tackle, wide receivers. I mean, you guys have done a tremendous job. Yeah, we've, uh, we've had the same offensive coordinator, Warren Ruggiero, for 10 years, the same O-line coach, the same running back coach. Kevin Higgins was the receiver coach. Uh, until this year, that's the first new offensive hire we've had in seven years. Mm. And at receiver, we just talked about four guys that all caught over 500 yards of balls <laughs> last year. I think we're the only team in the country that has four of those players. The guys behind them are really good, too. Wow, I mean, just Horatio Fields and Wesley Grimes and Walker Morrell. And there's the whole next generation is there, too. So not only are we good on the high end, I think we've got really good depth at that position and in our offense 
you know, you, you got to be good at receiver or those boxes get really tight. And again, they're learning from all those guys, much like the guys before them, which is really cool. Uh, when we had Mitch on here, he lit up when he was talking about Justice Ellison. He, he was so proud to talk about his running back and how he changes the game for him offensively and mm -hmm. for the team. Uh, speak on your running back and what he brings to the table. Justice is just a complete football player. I mean, he's so strong. He's quick. He's really smart. He's really the perfect back for our system. And, you know, we're getting some depth there, too. We're very excited about DeMond Claiborne, uh, Tate Carney. That last name rings a bell with Wake Forest fans. Will Towns probably had his best spring. And so what you want is you want high-end guys and you want depth. And the challenge at our place has always been getting through 12 games and staying healthy and having depth. And I think in a lot of ways, in some of those positions, we're better prepared to do that than ever before. How about your defense, Coach? Because this was a unit that we've seen flashes. We've seen them play just out of their mind, taking the ball away, getting extra opportunities. And I know you lost a handful of pieces and maybe some very important leadership pieces, but everyone that I've talked to close to your program or covers your program feels really good about this defense coming back. Well, it's our second year in Brad Lambert's system, and I think the second year you're in the system, you always expect a, a good jump. And we are a lot older on the back end. I mean, at safety, the top four safeties are back. You got Malik Mustafa, who I think is an all-conference caliber player, Chalen Garns, uh, Brendan Harris, A.J. Williams, uh, Nick Anderson, Evan Slocum, and then Kalen Carson, when he's healthy and he's right, is, uh, I think, one of the best corners in the ACC. Mm -hmm. And so we got really good back end. We got Chase Jones back. We're a little younger up front. You know, you lose Rondell, but Jasheen Davis yeah. is a really good player. And, and I think the, the guy that people are going to know a lot more about is, uh, you know, Wayman. He's going to be a really good player for us, too. Yeah. So Kendron is, he's going to be a high-end player. So it's just Wake Forest. We did graduate some good guys, but the new guys aren't true freshmen we're banking on. They're guys that have been in our program, and I think they're ready to step up. I did want to follow up on Mustafa there for a second. At the safety position, I mean, he's electric. You guys moved him around a bunch. You put him in different situations. Will, will we see more of that, his role kind of shine, where he's kind of your do-it-all guy? I just think he was a guy last year. If you watched him from game one to game 12 as he got comfortable playing, I mean, it was, right. <laughs> yeah, I mean, early in the year, there were some bad angles. He was still productive, but late in the year, I mean, there's times that he looks shot out of a cannon. Mm -hmm. And he's got good ball skills, good tackler, physical. Again, I'll be very disappointed if he doesn't have an all-ACC type of season for us. A couple years ago, you win the Atlantic Division. This year, no divisions. Uh, good, bad, and different. Where do you fall on this one? Or ask me later. Well, so I, I'm 10 years in the league, and every year would have votes on do we eliminate divisions. And everybody in the Atlantic would go, yes. <laughs> and everybody in the coastal got quiet. <laughs> I'm not sure why that is. Um, no idea. But, but you won the Atlantic. You know, that's we, my point. We won the Atlantic, won the Atlantic or... with, uh, you know, with Clemson and Florida State in it. We're really proud. But I think also for our student athletes, I'm 10th year in the league. Never ever coached against Miami. Wow. Never been to Miami. Yeah, Miami's wow. never been to us. And if you look at our footprint, I think now for every player, if you stay four years, you'll play every team home and away in your career there. And you know, it's it's cool to go to Miami. I've never been to Pittsburgh. You know, my my parents grew up near Pittsburgh, and I've never coached a game uh, in the new Pitt Stadium. I coached wow. in the old one. So. I, I think when you go to a new place and a new environment, that's part of the college football experience that all ACC players will now get. So I think it's a positive. Experience is key, and a big part of the experience in coming to Wake Forest is now your players get to enjoy this McCreary football complex, which is incredible, and I know it was just opened up this week, and you see the pictures and the videos of the guys getting to see it for the first time. They all have their phones out filming it. The joy that you feel getting to see them see that and knowing what's ahead for this program. Yeah, th those are what I call the, the goosebump moments. When they first got the McCreary Indoor Fieldhouse, they're jumping up and down when they see the locker room, when you win the Atlantic up in Boston College, that locker room, you know, it, it's, it's really about relationships and moments. And those are special moments as a football coach when you get to share that with your football team. And I think what those things do for our players is it represents an institutional commitment to football. That mm -hmm. football is very important at Wake Forest. 
Uh, I say that over and over. I, I don't know if the national landscape has found that yet, but I would tell anybody who covers college football, visit every Power 5 facility in the country and come to Wake Forest, and I'd be shocked if we're not in the top 10 or 15 of any facility. I, I saw there's a barber shop in there. I'm putting you on the spot. If there's one player on your team that you would trust <laughs> to cut your hair in that barber shop, who's it going to be? Ivan Mora. Okay. Okay. No, Ivan Mora. Easy oh, answer. Yeah, Ivan Mora. He's the best barber on the team. All right. There you go. How did you find that out? So, <laughs> I don't know how much time we have. We got time. We got at time. The, at the end of every practice, every coach goes to their positional group, and our tight ends coach, Wayne Lindenberg, is also the special teams coordinator. So, all the specialists come to me, and we'll talk for five, ten minutes, whatever, and it's never about football. <laughs> it's about what books they're reading, right. what's going on academically, what shows they're streaming. <laughs> So you do, you know, 130, 40 meetings a year, you start finding things out. <laughs> and Ivan, my understanding is he and Keyshawn Williams are the two best barbers on the team. Okay. And there's a little bit of debate. Who's best? Okay. I think Keyshawn charges a little bit more. Ah. Uh, <laughs> but Ivan has a longer client list. Now, wow. Keyshawn will claim it's because... The price. The price. Of course. Ivan and him will debate over the quality. That's so amazing. Those are probably the two. I think could they hook me up? Would I be yeah. all right? Oh, yeah. Mm. I think you'd be okay with me. <laughs> you're, an, you're, an, you're, an, you're, an, you're an expensive client. You're an expensive client. I have one. a razor and shaving That's cream. My and, man. My man. And I'll, I'll take Ivan's price Thank minus you. a dollar. Were, my man. Yeah. I appreciate that. Uh, yeah. You know, between you and me, Eric, I, <laughs> I think for about 25 cents, we can get a, a deal, right. right? That's about all we it costs. We can figure it out. We can figure it out. that deal. Well, Coach, listen, we need to get to any food. Normally every interview in some shape or form involves food, but I will give you a tip. The next time you're in charge, you and I have talked about getting together for Breaking Bread. I, I took my wife last night because it was her birthday. To, she wanted Mediterranean. I have found a spot for you. Okay. Lamani. And I'm not being paid for it, but that's got our you name might, on it. Maybe you the should be, yeah. Maybe the next time. <laughs> yeah. We'll trade a haircut. So we NIL have deal. Pack working on his NIL deal. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Right. Well, yeah. You yeah. got to pay, <laughs> pay the bills somewhere. We look forward to watching you guys play, right? Okay. Really Thanks for having me on. Thanks, You got it. There's Dave Clawson. done an incredible job.